Qualifying for the Belgian Grand Prix is over and Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari takes pole position, but it was Max Verstappen who was the fastest driver by some distance. But how did he achieve this? Well, that is what we're going to be finding out as we do a data analysis from a wet to dry qualifying session at Spa. Now let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about McLaren, Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull a little bit later on, so stick around for that. Also, I will be providing a little bit of an update with regards to the channel at the end of the video, so do make sure you are around for that. Qualifying for the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa was, as I said, a wet to dry session, which means that we once again got to see the intermediate tyres as well as the slick tyres, and this obviously means that there was a huge amount of circuit evolution from the start of Q1 to the end of Q3. And to show this, I have all of the lap times of Charles Leclerc from qualifying, and you can see there was a mighty 19 seconds improvement from the first fast lap of Q1 to the end of Q3. This would make sense as the first laps were almost borderline ready for full wets, whereas the circuit was finally fully dried out for Q3 at the end of the session. So let's compare the first qualifying lap from Q1 and compare it to the end of Q3 to see where this massive 19 second improvement came from. As you can see when we look at the trace from both laps, Leclerc is just infinitely faster everywhere. Obviously down the pitch straight and down the Kemmel straight you can see his top speed just diverges from the first lap and this is because, well, DRS was enabled. Also through the top of Eau Rouge you can see Leclerc has to give a big lift in the first lap as the car probably lost traction at the top of the hill. Also through Puon, Leclerc cannot carry anywhere near the amount of speed that he was able to on the final lap. In fact, he was only a very slight tap of the brake on the final lap, whereas on the first lap, there was a much larger brake and he was not able to get to the same amount of throttle as the final lap. Finally, going through the final chicane, Leclerc was able to just go so much faster and this is where he was actually able to make up 5 seconds on that one short section. This goes to show just how much faster the drivers are able to go when they have grip versus no grip. So the question is then, what teams look good and what teams didn't look so good today? Well, one team that didn't have a very good day and in fact had a very bad day was Williams as both Logan Sargent and Alex Albon were eliminated from the first part of qualifying and sadly for Williams, this is probably down to the fact that qualifying was wet. As in the dry, I really do think they could have had a great session, especially given on how they went at Silverstone. But where did they lose out? Well, to find out, I've brought up the invalidated lap time of Ricardo and compared it to Albon. Yes, this lap for Ricardo was invalidated, however, Ricardo did not really gain a lot of time at the top of the hill, and this is not where Albon lost out. As you can see at this section here through Puon Corner and also into the Fania Chicane, Ricardo is much faster than Albon is able to go, and finally, on the run into Blanchemont, Ricardo just has so much grip. For Williams, the race, if it is wet, could be tricky, but a dry race will look a lot better and points could be possible, but either way, it will be a tough fight for that Williams team. Speaking of Ricardo though, AlphaTauri actually had a great day, all things considered. Yes, Ricardo went out in Q1, but if the lap was not invalidated, then both cars would have possibly been 11th and 12th on the grid. Yuki had a great session and qualified an impressive 11th place on the grid and was half a second clear of the nearest car behind him. So let's compare the lap time of the car that was behind Tsunoda, which was Pierre Gasly, to Yuki Tsunoda to see where Gasly lost out. As you can see, Gasly is the faster car, which we would expect by now as AlphaTauri has lacked straight line speed all year long. However, through Pion Corner, Sonoda is able to carry more speed, similar to how Ricardo was faster than Albon. Sonoda had a great run on the exit of Stavolo going towards Blanchemont as well. It was through this section where Gasly lost the vast majority of his time. For AlphaTauri, they will be praying that tomorrow's sprint and Sunday's Grand Prix is a little bit wet, because this is where they are seemingly strongest. When the circuit dries out and the grip comes up, it will be hard for them, simply down to the fact that they seemingly have a very low top speed for their car this weekend. 
I just want to say if you are enjoying the video, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I am on my way to 3k and I would really appreciate it if you help me reach that goal. Now let's get back to the video and let's start talking about the top 5 teams and let's start with McLaren. For McLaren, it was a little bit more of a disappointing day after the highs of Silverstone and Budapest, but they can still be relatively happy with their performance as Piastri is starting the race in P5 and Norris will be P7. During the wet and changeable section of qualifying, things were looking very strong for them and they were potentially on for pole position, but when Q3 came around and the circuit was fully dry, they were just lacking a little bit of pace. This could be because McLaren opted for a higher downforce, maybe hoping it would be wet. And you can see that when we compare the times of Piastri to Verstappen. You can see that McLaren are massively lacking in a straight line and are only really faster through Rivage and Puom, but everywhere else is dominated by Verstappen in the Red Bull. And for McLaren, they will be hoping for a little bit of rain because, it's, like I said, it seems like they have a little bit more downforce when compared to their rivals, which is why in the changeable section of qualifying, they were so fast. But when things dried out, they are simply lacking a little bit too much in a straight line. For Ferrari, qualifying for Spa went very well as Charles Leclerc was once again finding himself on pole position during a sprint weekend. Although that was more down to the fact that Verstappen does have a penalty. When we compare the pole lap of Leclerc to his teammate Sainz who is in P4, what can we see? Well, what we can see is that between the two cars there's not really a lot to tell as things were pretty close. Leclerc made up most of his time through each of the braking zones only for signs to make the time back up when on full throttle, maybe suggesting a slightly lower downforce for signs when compared to Leclerc. With this performance, it seems like Ferrari are probably going to be hoping that tomorrow will be dry, but that being said, they were still pretty handy during the intermediate conditions. For Aston Martin, they were rather unsurprisingly the fifth fastest car, as Stroll is in P10, and Alonso is lining up in P9 on the grid. However, it does seem like for once, they are not the slowest car in a straight line. As I mentioned when talking about McLaren, they were running higher downforce than their rivals, and you can see that when we compare the lap time of Piastri to Alonso. As you can see, Piastri is nowhere near Alonso's top speed, despite the fact that Aston Martin has an overall draggy car in a straight line. Because of the straight line speed, Alonso is actually much faster down the Camel Straight, and this will be a concern for McLaren at the start of the race. They might find themselves going backwards at the beginning if they are not careful. For Alonso, even though he is way up at the beginning, he does end up slower overall, and this is because McLaren were mighty through Fania and Stavolo. Finally, at the exit of the bus stop, Alonso struggles for traction a lot more than the McLaren, but this can give Aston Martin confidence that on Sunday, they can potentially get ahead of McLaren at the start of the race. For Mercedes, it was a little bit of a mixed bag day as Lewis Hamilton lines up in P3 on the grid, whereas his teammate George Russell is starting the race all the way down in P8, and really throughout qualifying, George just did not have the pace of his teammate. When you look at the laps of both drivers, you can see that Hamilton has much better pace in a straight line. The reason for this is Hamilton is running slightly less downforce as George, as it seems like he is far more comfortable with the car, and therefore can handle less downforce than Russell. For George, it seems like handling has been an issue for him, and really for him to feature in the race, he may be banking on weather playing a part, which it might do during the sprint race, and this could be where he makes up most of his ground. And finally for Red Bull, it was almost a disaster day for Max Verstappen as he was very close to being eliminated in Q2. But in the end, it was, for Max, pure domination as he was fastest by over 8 tenths of a second. Let's now take a look at the lap times of Leclerc and Verstappen to see where Max was simply so much faster. Rather unsurprisingly, you can see that when DRS is enabled here, Max gains more than Leclerc in a straight line, which is something we are used to seeing at this point. But not only this, Max is way faster through Rivage here into the corner with no name. And also the exit of Puon for Max is way better as he sacrifices a little bit on entry for better exit. Even though Max has a 5th place penalty, there is a feeling of inevitability that Max will take the lead and win the Grand Prix. 
Now, just as I mentioned, there would be a channel update, and well, here we go. You may have seen my post on either YouTube, or on my Twitter, or on my X, or whatever it's called now, that I have recently completed purchasing my first home, and well, it's a bit of a project. This update is basically me telling you that there may be a slowdown in content being released during this mid-season break. I intend to still release videos, but the rate may be slightly slower, as this move is my main priority right now. When the season resumes in Zanfort, I should hopefully be in a position where normal service can resume. I don't anticipate that I will be making a video on the sprint race. I am sorry, but I will be busy painting my house that day. That being said, I do intend to make a data analysis of Sunday's Grand Prix, so make sure you are around for that. So with that in mind, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.